the Honda CRX. A true legend. A rice rocket. Or finally a respected classic car, and true collector's item. In this video we will find out why people love the Honda CRX, or still cherish the CRX till this day. The CRX was originally launched as the Honda Ballade Sports CRX in Japan. It is a front-wheel drive sport compact car manufactured by Honda from 1983 until 1991. The first and second generation CRX was marketed in some regions outside Japan as the Honda Civic CRX. Although there are many supposed definitions for the acronym CRX, the most widely accepted is, Civic Renaissance Experimental. To keep costs down, the first generation CRX used as many parts from the forthcoming third generation Civic as possible. This included a shortened version of the new car's pressed steel floor pan. In 1983, for the 1984 model year, Honda introduced an all-new two-seater that shared the drive train with the Civic, but offered unique styling and interior furnishings. At its introduction, the CRX was available in Japan through Honda Verno dealerships, and accompanied the Vigor, the Quint, and the Prelude. In North America, the CRX was marketed in two versions, Economy and Sport. The Economy model used a new aluminum 1.3-liter CVCC four-cylinder engine. The Sport model featured an aluminum 1.5-liter 12-valve four-cylinder engine and was available with a 5-speed manual or 3-speed automatic transmission. The Japanese SI and European 1.6i 16-valve models came with a 1.6-liter 16-valve double overhead camshaft four-cylinder engine, putting out 135 PS 99 kilowatts. 133 horsepower in the UK spec model and 140 PS 103 kilowatts 138 horsepower in the JDM model Though similar versions of the same engine the Japanese SI engine was stamped ZC while the European engine was stamped ZC1 For 1985 Honda of America replaced the economy version with an HF model Featuring a 1.5-liter engine which uses an aluminum block but the 1984 CVCC cylinder head, two valves per cylinder instead of the new aluminum head with three valves per cylinder. In spring 1985, Honda of America introduced an SI model featuring a more powerful 1.5-liter single overhead cam four-cylinder engine. The SI model included a power sunroof, standard dual remote exterior mirrors, rear wiper, 13-inch alloy wheels and an SI exclusive ducktail spoiler for the hatch. For 1986, Honda updated the CRX with new aerodynamic headlights. The SI received body color matched lower cladding, a revised rear spoiler, new bumper covers and 14-inch alloy wheels. The interior was upgraded and added a center console with cassette tape storage. The interior was trimmed with the kind of hard plastic and fabric found in most Japanese cars of this era. Directly behind the three-spoke steering wheel was an unusual triangular instrument binnacle. Large analog redouts for road and engine speed were flanked by smaller redouts for water temperature and fuel. In between the tachometer and speedometer was a bank of 12 warning lights. Controls for the ventilation system and a variety of switches were located below the main binnacle, either side of the steering wheel. Gotta love the 80s. Heavily bolstered sports seats were trimmed in two-tone black with black and white checkered fabric. Door panels were trimmed with the same kind of hard plastic as the dash. JDM cars were fitted with a folding rear seat described by Honda as a one-mile seat for emergency use. Long before Mugen just inserted a few kits here and there on models like the Accord, it was turning up the sportiness of its cars up to 11. That included the first-generation CRX when it introduced the Mugen CRX Pro body kit in 1985. It easily transformed the CRX into a race car for the streets with its aerodynamic body kit. And it gave a head start for the Japanese tuner culture that followed. To celebrate the Honda-powered Williams team's victory in the 1986 Formula One Constructors' Championship, a series of F1 Special Editions were produced on the CRX, Civic, Integra and Accord platforms. 
introduced soon after the Williams Hondas secured the title at the Portuguese Grand Prix in September 1986, with two races still to go. The F1 Special Editions were produced exclusively for the Japanese domestic market. 400 CRX F1 SI Special Editions were built, all of which were painted polar white and came with body-colored exterior mirrors. The custom 14-inch alloy wheels were also painted polar white, as was the rear spoiler. Other special exterior features included yellow fog lights, a bronze-tinted windscreen and F1 Special Edition decals ahead of the rear wheels. Inside, the seats were embroidered with F1 Special Edition stitching. A unique three-spoke steering wheel featured a horn push with text that read, Grand Prix Champion F1 1986 Formula One World Championship Series. It was by far the most special CRX from the first generation you can have. And a true collector's item these days. 220,502 examples of the first generation CRX were completed for 1987. Given this extraordinary level of success, it was inconceivable a successor would not be offered. Accordingly, Honda started production of the second-generation CRX in September 1987. The Honda CRX was completely redesigned by late 1987 for the 1988 model year. The wheelbase increased 4 inches, or 102 mm overall. Length increased by 3.2 inches or 81 mm and width is nearly 2 inches 51 mm wider than the previous model. The suspension was completely redesigned. Honda abandoned the original torsion bar in the front and beam axle with trailing link in the rear in favor of a four-wheel double wishbone suspension. One of the technical innovations at that time, why Hondas have such a good handling. The larger design and revised suspension brought improvements in handling, as well passenger and cargo space versus the previous generation. The CRX received a mild refresh for the 1990 model year. It came with running lights without the screws, other tail lights and smaller side molding, as well as some minor interior updates. The B16 VTEC equipped models also received a makeover with updated bumpers, lights, hood, brakes, suspension and dashboard design amongst other features. Additionally, some of these design changes were added to the concurrent non VTEC models. One of the options for the Japanese domestic market CRX was a glass roof, a fixed glass panel which stretched from the top of the windshield to the top of the hatch opening. Relatively common in Japan, these are sought after models in other markets. Though there is no specific designer involved, it has been said that one of the designers at that time owned an Alfa Romeo Jr. Zagato, and that was the inspiration for the shape they went with. Infatuated with the rise of sci-fi and the future in the late 1980s, the marketing team at Honda gave the CRX a cool catchphrase in its ads and brochures, when it was launched in 1987. Honda called it, Cyber Sports, which was associated with the cyberpunk craze at the time. With the second generation CRX, not only has Honda pushed performance to give the car a sporty pedigree but also gave it some brilliant handling. The CRX was equipped with a four-wheel double wishbone setup which easily made it one of the best handling cars in its class. Even Ayrton Senna, who was the factory Formula One driver at that time, drove a CRX on the track, and he was very happy about how the car handled and performed. Outside of North America, the second-generation CRX was available with a 1.5-liter SOHC four-cylinder engine or an updated version of the 1.6-liter DOHC four-cylinder ZC engine. Many of these were fitted with fuel injection as standard. Called PGMFI in Honda terms what stands for program fuel injection. In September 1989, Honda added the 1.6-liter 16-valve DOHC VTEC four-cylinder B16A engine to the lineup outside of North America. The VTEC, what stands for Variable Valve Timing and Lift Electronic Control, engine provided increased power at high RPMs while still allowing low fuel consumption and better idling at low RPMs. 
The Japanese B-16A in the JDMSIR model produced 150 PS or 110 kilowatts in the European 1.6 IBT model where the engine had the internal code. B-16A1, it had 160 PS or 118 kilowatts. The CRX was the second car to receive a DOHC VTEC engine, shortly after the Honda Integra XSI. The CRX equipped with the 1.6-liter DOHC 4-cylinder engine or the 1.6-liter DOHC VTEC 4-cylinder engine came with a different bonnet since the twin cam engines were taller and required additional bonnet clearances in comparison to the SOHC engines. The 1.6-liter DOHC engine was only slightly taller than the 1.6-liter SOHC engine and required a different bonnet with a bump on one side which offered the additional necessary clearance to clear the cam gear cover. Cars equipped with a 1.6-liter DOHC VTEC 4-cylinder engine came with a bonnet that was raised across most of the engine bay to offer additional overall clearance for the taller engine. In some left-hand drive European markets, there was also the option of the D14A1 engine with automatic gearbox which featured twin carburetors. In the US, three different trim levels were available. The standard, sometimes called the DX, equipped with the 1.5-liter 16-valve dual-point fuel injection 4-cylinder D15 V2 engine. The HF high fuel efficiency model with the 1.5-liter 8-valve multi-point fuel injection MPFI 4-cylinder D15 V6 engine, or the SI, sport injected model with the 1.6-liter 16-valve MPFI 4-cylinder D16 A6 engine. The base model was available with either a 5-speed manual transmission or a 4-speed automatic transmission while the HF and SI only offered a 5-speed manual transmission. A modification made to the rear on all second-generation vehicles is a heavily stippled black glass panel installed on the upper half of the rear of the vehicle, above the tail lights which aided in rearward visibility. Air conditioning was a dealer-installed option on all models. The SI model came with a power sliding sunroof, a rear wiper and 14-inch alloy wheels. Underneath, the SI model was equipped with a rear anti-sway bar along with variable ratio rack and pinion steering. The 90-91 SI models had four-wheel disc brakes. The CRX tuned by Mugen, based on this second-generation CRX was called the Mugen CRX Pro 2. The characteristics of this model are primarily the aerodynamic parts. Those aero parts were originally styled from race marshals cars, but further refined for street use. While retaining the individuality of the normal CRX, the car was given a sportier feel, from the wide front bumper spoiler to the side steps and the rear under spoiler, even looking at it now we can see that it has quite a high level of finish. Moreover, apart from the aerodynamic refinements, alloy wheels, suspension kit and power enhancement kits were available, and if they were all fitted it was possible to build a truly satisfying, cutting-edge CRX. Back in the 80s and 90s, when all the Japanese tuner car culture arrived in the rest of the world, it became one of the favorite cars to tune. Upgrades were endless, from body kits to turbo setups, wheels, suspension and everything in between. This car was one of the most influential tuner cars of the decade. And until this day, you still see people modifying the 20-plus-year-old CRXs, or keep them stock and cherish them in heated sheds, and love them as if it was their own child. Me personal have the most in common with the second-generation CRX, the handling, the feel, the aftermarket, the looks, it will forever be my number one car love. I had a lot of them, from a frost white USDM 1.5 automatic with steel roof and blue interior, to a 1.6 European spec DOHC, and a celestial blue pearl E8, called EF8 in Japan, with of course the famous B16 engine. As I mentioned, tuning upgrades wear endlessly, but even with OEM Honda parts, you can interchange a lot from other Honda models. Like brakes, engine swaps etc. Want AK20 in your CRX?
No problem. Back in the days the Honda community was a tight and friendly scene. Everyone was helping each other, no problem what Honda you drove. And everything was already done, so if you had a problem or want to find out something, or how it worked. Just look it up on the interwebs, and you are amazed how much information there is. Despite its better handling, improved engines and in my humble opinion better looks, the second generation CRX produced from 1988 to 1991, numbered a slightly less production of 171,393 units sold. In 1992, Honda replaced the CRX with a new, target-topped, Civic EG-based model called the Honda CRX Del Sol. The CRX Del Sol was also badged as the Civic Del Sol and later the Del Sol in some markets, and known simply as the CRX in others. It is because of this that the Del Sol is generally considered the third-generation CRX among enthusiasts. In the United States, the Del Sol came in three trim lines, S, BXI in Japan, later VGI, SI, ESI in Europe, and VTEC. BTI in Europe, the JDM SIR model featured a 1.6-liter 170 horsepower, 130 kilowatts V16 SIR 2 DOHC VTEC 4-cylinder engine. Production of the Del Sol ended in 1997 in North America, elsewhere in 1998 and thus, the CRX line was retired. Despite the body resemblance to a mid-engine car design, the Del Sol is based on the front-engine Honda Civic EG platform, but some people did a mid-engine swap. I think the Del Sol, back in the days, never had the love it deserves. It was called a Barbie car, a girl's car, or for people who didn't know what gender they were. But that's all wrong. Despite its bad reputation then, the Del Sol had a comeback in the mid-2000s, and even till these days there are a lot of Del Sol enthusiasts, and they cherish their car just like other car enthusiasts. The Spanish name Del Sol translates to of the sun, and refers to the car's opening roof. The Del Sol featured a removable aluminum hardtop that stowed onto a hinged frame in the trunk. An option available in Japan and Europe was the Transtop, an electric mechanism which retracted the target top into the trunk via a push of a button. The roof is operated by flicking two catches above the windows, then holding down a button. The trunk lid raises vertically and two arms extend into the target top. After locking the lid to the arms, the arms pull the target into the trunk lid, which lowers back down with the roof inside. The open process is reversed for the closure and return of the Targa top. It was the first open-air Honda sold in the United States. Depending on model and market, the options included a rear spoiler, custom floor mats, an automatic transmission, power steering, heated mirrors, front fog lights, traction control system, JDM only, a limited slip differential, JDM only, and air conditioning. Honda made in total 74,936 Del Sol models from 1993 to 1998, but no one's quite sure how many are still around. In 2010, 13 years after the end of the CRX production, Honda released the CRZ, regarded as the spiritual successor to the CRX. But I am not going to talk about that car, because in my eyes it was never a true CRX. For me personally, the CRX had such a great impact on my life, that I forever cherish all the fine moments. Coming from an Italian car family, I drove Alfa Romeos, Lancias and Fiats. Until Gran Turismo was released on the PlayStation 1, I never had much interest in Japanese cars, but I still remember one of my first cars in the game was a CRX with Mugen livery. I won almost everything with it. One day I was at a car meet in my Lancia Delta back in 2003, and someone I know from a forum had his Accord Type R with him. The days, car meets were still pleasant to be, no takeover bullshit, or only people with air ride and expensive wheels. No hate between people who drove another brand, or had a more expensive or cheap car. Everyone was welcome. Coming from a very analog Lancia, stepping in the passenger seat from the Accord, I was amazed from the first time VTEC kicked in. 
I was surprised he can adjust the VTech moment on a little device, the gauges, the sound, the feeling, this was something else. That weekend I was looking on the web, in forums, for a Honda. And found a CRX nearby, I had to have it. Despite what my family said, I just had to have that car. And once you had a Honda, I was hooked, the sound, the go-kart feel, the technique. Yes, it was it for me. It was the time of the first Fast and the Furious, the time of Gran Turismo, Need for Speed, Car Meets. Man, I had a great time. It's such a shame the CRXs nowadays are such rare vehicles, back in the days I bought them for about 2000 euros, even the VTI models. That time is a long gone. Good examples are fetching more than 5000 for a reasonable car, and more than 10k for a mint version. But if you ask me, are they are worth it? Yes, they are. And if you still have one these days, cherish it, love it, because the time of little pocket rockets like the CRX is never coming back. And the value of the car for mint examples is only going up. Thank you for watching. Please, like, share, comment or subscribe, I love to have some feedback.